Goes just Alexander. Shabbat for three. Bang! Yo! Somebody tell him he's a rookie. Clipper Nation, what's going on? Welcome to the show. No Eagle, your radio voice, and we'll get to our special guest in a moment. But when you hear the date, April 15th, 2019, most people were probably getting ready to finish their taxes or do whatever they had to do in their normal daily routine. But for Clipper Nation, it's a very special date. It's a date that'll hold a place in everybody's heart forever. That is the date of the 31-point comeback, one year to the day. First of all, time flies. But second of all, it's a celebration. And who better to honor that celebration than the man that put the team in front for good? Landry Shamit. How you doing, man? Yes. I'm great, man. What about you? Are you staying in shape? What are you doing at home to, to keep in basketball mode? Yeah, so obviously it's difficult. It's really, really weird right now. Um, but luckily... Uh, my garage has turned into a little bit of a makeshift uh, home gym. So I've got a pretty good little setup there. Um, I'm able to do basically a lot of the same things I was doing um, during the season uh, in terms of like strength training, um, you know, be safe while doing it. You know, that's the number one thing. Uh, I understand this is a serious issue, but, um, you know, when when we're going to be expected to play, hopefully in the next couple months you want to put yourself in the best position possible while staying safe so that's kind of been my approach other than playing other than staying in shape what other things have you kept busy with i know you like to read i know you're somewhat of a renaissance man at a young age what do you like to do uh to keep busy during the day yeah so we got a puppy he's been uh kind of the attention for the last we've had him for five days now four days five days oh wow Um, and i i've taken my eyes off of him like five times so uh but he's good he's he's been a task and he's been fun um so that you know puppies are that's always fun i love dogs what kind of dog is it he's a uh blue nose pit bull so we got him from a rescue shelter right around the corner um he's doing good he's done he's done good so far so well perfect time to get one and i'm glad that it's keeping you busy at home when you're not working out and staying in shape Uh, Here's the task at hand. It's the one-year anniversary of the 31-point comeback at Golden State last year. So let's break it down. You're the man to do it. Let's set the scene first and foremost. Top-seeded Warriors won 57 games last year. You guys coming in as the eighth seed. Dropped that first game. A Warriors team that, in total, six playoff games lost in total in the prior two seasons and route to championships. Six total home losses in four full postseasons and route to the NBA Finals and a team that had won back-to-back championships. What was the vibe going into game two for you guys? I think I remember Doc just saying, just play free. Just, you know, don't worry about all the extra stuff going on, where you're at, expectations. Uh, They got to come out and play too. They got to guard us too. I think the whole conversation was how do you stop that team with, you know, all the weapons they had. Um, but at the end of the day, they had to had to do the same to us. I mean, they're they're humans. Um, they're another basketball team. There's five of them. There's five of us. So Doc Stang was just play free, and um, that was kind of what we did. And you know, we nobody really cared about. Nobody had any personal agenda. You know, I, I just remember kind of us walking them down early deficit. That was kind of the theme of the team last year. With regardless of what the deficit was early on, coming in the second half, you knew we, you still had to had to play us straight up and play us serious because we were we were a threat to, to come back and beat you, and, and that's exactly what we did. They were one of the best teams coming out of the locker room of really delivering that knockout punch right away in the second half. And going into the locker room in game two at Oracle, you guys were down by 23 at halftime. Steph had, had really got it going. What was the locker room like knowing that, again, as you mentioned, this is a team that had come back from deficits, but you were going to have to do it once again? Just – you know, motivated. Um, and again, Doc, I think one of the best things about Doc is just how well he can get guys motivated and say the right things to to get you going. Um, and I remember when we got back on the floor at the at the start of the, the third quarter, I, I walked up to him and asked him, I said, hey, Doc, well, we were down, what, 28 to Boston? And he looked at me, shook his head, and I shook my head and, you know, went on the floor and we went and played. So, um You know, there was no, like, fear. And I think the biggest thing was just our team's identity last year. We were a bunch of misfits put together. Felt like we were a lot of guys that were overlooked. And um, all year kind of had been doubted and counted out. And 
we were going to go and play and had nothing to lose. And, you know, whatever happened from there happened. And we were going to be a force to be reckoned with. Eventually, you do go down by 31 in this game in game two with about seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. For you, and you played big minutes in this game, at what point did you feel like the tide was really starting to turn in your favor where you felt that momentum and you felt like you were gaining steam on the best team in the West? I think we we just strung together. There were like three or four possessions where we came down and scored, got whatever we wanted. I think when we cut it to like 14 or 15, where you're saying, okay, like you can hear the crowd kind of groaning. And every time they're inbounding the ball after we score, the crowd's like clapping, applauding, trying to get them going. And that happened five possessions in a row, four or five in a row. And you're thinking, okay, like we're right here. Like if we – we keep putting stops together and, and getting scores on the other end, getting exactly what we want, then then we're right here at the end of the game. And uh, I think that they're about 14 or 15. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember looking up and hearing the crowd, kind of the air getting sucked out and uh, thinking, OK, like, yeah, we're we're in this. It seemed like Lou and Trez, I mean, they did it all year in this game in particular. Lou finishes with 36 and 11, Trez with 25 and 10. What were they doing specifically that night to really terrorize the Warriors? Just being them. You know, they're hard to guard because uh, they're both – Lou Lou is seen as this, like, just scorer and all he does is score, but he's one of the best, like, passers I've been around too. It's – you know, I don't think he gets enough credit for that, especially last year on our team. Um, he, he was put in a lot of really tough situations and – where he had to had to be our playmaker, our go-to guy all the time, um, and he just found ways to to make plays against them with Trez, and you know, knowing he's going to look to score, but he's got Trez right here under the rim if he can't. So it's just hard to guard, you know, when you have two guys on that that caliber. For you as a rookie coming onto this team halfway through the season, right after the trade deadline. What did you pick up from Lou just kind of being around him from osmosis? And obviously this carries into year two as well. But what in particular have you taken from him to kind of implement into your own game? I think what makes him, uh, you know, for me, I I get told I'm too unselfish sometimes um, and can can kind of divert and look to pass too early as opposed to trying to be aggressive. And I think this year, obviously, with the team we had and, the, the new added firepower and all the guys and expectations and stuff. I think I I was a little, you know, passive and, and I've had times even last year when I got here to kind of divert and get other guys involved where I need to be aggressive. Um, and I think that's what makes Lou such a good passer. And he, he talked to me about that a few times where he's saying, look, man, the only reason I'm making plays is because I know I'm looking to score every time I get the ball. And then it's just a read right. from there. So I, one of the things that's what makes him a good passer is that he he sells you thinking he's going to go score every single time, but then just makes the easy, simple plays based on how the defense reacts. So I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I, I try to be unselfish and make plays for other people, but you have to have the mindset of I'm going to be aggressive for myself and try to go score and then just make the right play from there. So let's get to the shot, because that's why. We're, we're truly here. The shot that put you guys ahead. You claw all the way back. You mention it. You cut it to 14, 15. You really start chipping away. And then here it is. Probably the biggest shot of your life, if I had to guess. On the right wing, you get open. Shea finds you. What's going through your head at this moment? Did it feel good off the hand right away? Like, take me through the whole process. Yeah. So, again, like I said, you know, we put the ball before Shea had the ball. Uh, we put – put Lou with the ball at the top of the key, make a play. Um, Shea ran into a ball screen uh, to try to get a switch with, uh, with Steph. And then, you know, again, Lou makes the right play. He gets doubled, throws it to Shea. Shea makes the right play. Sees the guy pull over, throws it to me. And it felt great out of my hand. I saw him pull over. Uh, I think, I forgot who it was guarding me, but, you know, I saw him pull over to try to help on the roll. And I knew if I got it, I was going to, going to put it up. So, um, felt great out of my hand, and and when it went in, hearing the crowd kind of the air get sucked out of the crowd was one of the the best, probably the best feeling of my basketball career, no doubt. Most people wait, most players wait at least 10, 12, 15 years to get a moment like that in their NBA career. You got it in your rookie year in your first playoff series, just your second postseason game ever. And Lou Williams talked about it after the game, the amount of trust that they had on you, despite your inexperience in the league. 
What was going through your head when Landry yeah. hit that shot? Uh, I put my hands up. As soon as he caught it, I put my hands up, man. Um, Landry is a high-level shooter, man. I, um, I'm really impressed with his poise and, and just the, the level of, of competitiveness that he has with his jump shot and coming off those screens. And I feel really good about it when he's, when he's just a standstill shooter. You know, he's just a pure, just a pure all-out shooter. So uh, I saw the trap, gave it up to Shea, and Shea drove and kicked it, and I put my hands up immediately. I felt really good about the shot. So. What does it mean to you to, to know that your teammates have that much trust in you as a shooter and as just a teammate overall? Yeah, I mean, that's Lou to a T. Um, and that's not him just being to the media. You know, he gets he gets on me if I come off a double pin and I have an inch of space and I don't shoot it. Uh, you know, so he's always, he's always empowering me. Um, and that's one of the best feelings when you have teammates that, that do believe in you. Um, want you to be better and, and want you to help help the team win, help us out. Um, so it, it feels really good knowing that, you know, everybody's got my back. Seriously hard to believe that it's been a year. I'm sure that it's a moment that you'll never forget. So we wanted to quiz that. We wanted to make sure that you won't forget it. It's called the comeback quiz. We could call it the cardiac clips, the comeback clips, whatever you want to call it. 2019 game two from April 15th. 2019, I've got my scorecard. It's very official. I actually used to host a game show in case you didn't know. So really be prepared because I'm going to grill you on this. You ready? All right. Yeah. All right. Question number one. What was the deficit at the end of the third quarter heading into the fourth? Poof. I should know this. Heading into the fourth. Yeah. 18. No, it was actually even closer. 14. You know what? It's a, it's a tough question. I, I will say that was one of the tougher questions to start. 14 points. It was 108 to 94 after being down by 3-1 with 7.31 to go in the third quarter. Really, that, that was, as you mentioned, just putting a couple of those possessions together and then getting a couple of stops. Before you knew it, I, I feel like everybody blinked and it was a manageable deficit going into the final frame. How did the play go for the go-ahead three? How, if you drew it up, actually, through your memory, tell me how it went yeah. for you to hit that go-ahead three. Lou, mid-pick and roll. Shea came up, mm -hmm. set the screen to get the switch. They doubled. Uh, yeah, Steph and Clay doubled Lou. Lou bounced pass to, to Shea. Igudala stepped up to take Shea. Shea over the top. Iggy almost got a finger on it. Shea over the top to me, Draymond closed out. Uh, yeah. Dare I say, bingo. Nailed it! Bingo. Landry Shamit, yeah. the perfect, perfect picture here. Again, Lou off of the mid-pick and roll from Trez, gets it to Shea, drives, draws the defense, you're wide open. And like you said, I like the way that you put it earlier, there's always just a, a very small sliver that NBA teams defensively really can collapse or – make that small mistake and you guys took full advantage of it which was cool to see right right yeah it was all right as you look at it and on that pass it was like that far away game of inches man game of inches all right let's keep it rolling this one i feel like you'll get i feel good about it who was the first person to meet you after that timeout right after you hit that shot as well it was wrong rome Jump. that's your that's your Jump up. Sure. Or Pat? Who jumped at me? Pat? Yes, Pat is correct. Pat is correct. Pat, Pat, Pat and then Rome, Rome, I think, was Rome six. was in the back We'll get the clip again. Me. Rome was in the back yelling. I was looking at Rome. I was looking at Rome. <laughs> so I you didn't see Pat literally nearly I, murder you? No, yeah, You've yeah, got Garrett Temple Did you right see there? me doing the three right here? When I was doing that, I, I was see that, right yeah. at Rome. Right at Rome. I mean, it's the rookie connection. Yeah, I get it. Right I get it. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, Pat nearly takes out your chance of having children. Pat, no. So that was, uh, yeah, that, that could have been a problem. All right, let's move on before I get myself in trouble. Who grabbed the final rebound to seal the victory for you guys? Eventually it led to free throws, but who was it that secured that board after you hit the shot? Trez. You nailed it. Yes, it was Trez. Off of a tip out by you, I might add. So here's the play again. Steph tried to get the three up. Gallo gets a piece, you get a piece, and then it's Trez who finally got it. Yep. Remember that one. 
I got one. Sure, I got a couple one. free throws. Confidently right. That's good. <laughs> You've got a couple. No, no, no. You got a couple. Don't worry. I first of all, I'm counting the last one because you're right. You were looking at Rome. Pat jumped up on yeah. you. You nailed the play. You nailed one earlier. You've nailed a couple now in a row. You're starting to get hot. You're starting to catch fire like you do on the court. This one, yes. I think you've got this one. Down 94 to 63. What was the chance of winning percentage that ESPN gave you guys? Yeah, it was like 0. 0.01, 0. 0.0. Yeah. Net. Got it. 0.01%. They basically said There's... there was zero chance for you to win, which, yeah. by the way, like, what's going on there? Hadn't they seen games earlier in the year? 28 point comeback at Boston. Comebacks right. on several occasions. Like, come on. Yeah, we need to talk talk to the uh, statisticians at uh, at ESPN. Um, fantastic stuff, Landry. We appreciate you taking a few minutes with us. Uh, we know that you're busy, you know, working out and staring at your dog. Enjoy all the time off, and we hope to get back to basketball soon. Appreciate it, man. No doubt, man. I appreciate you. Thank you.